Well, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. I'm thrilled to be here because I, uh, as, uh, I was brought here to UCSD to bring more Mexico into San Diego, into UCSD. So while well, being in this campus closer to Mexico, closer to Tijuana, it facilitates my life. So I'm very happy <laughs> for being here. So let me uh, try to argue. I, I will argue that Mexico is the indispensable ally of the United States. Uh, I'll tell you why, and I will try to, uh, to convey my, my message that uh, the two countries, when they cooperate, it, it is much better for Mexicans and for Americans. This is what Americans, when you ask an American, what do you think Mexico means? It's, it is very negative. It's drugs, it's immigrants, it's poverty, cartels, corruption. Yes, there's a little bit of tacos and a little bit of beaches, but it's mostly very negative. And this is the words that come to mind when, uh, when you ask an American, what, what is Mexico all about? Now, let me tell you that the, at the very high levels of policy making in Washington, D.C., and this is a bipartisan consensus, Mexico is taken very seriously. You can tell that President Bush, uh, W. Bush, in September 5th, 2001, he said, the United States has no more important relationship in the world than our relationship with Mexico. You've seen him with Mr. Fox, and, uh, and this is very telling because his first state dinner was for Mexico, for President Fox, not for the British, not for the Germans, not for the Canadians, it was for Mexico, for Mexicans. And, uh, they were, as we call them, the two cowboy friends, one from Texas, the other one from Guanajuato. And uh, then Barack Obama, he used to say, the United States sells more to Mexico than to China, India, and Russia combined. I will say Barack Obama got it well. He actually, I, I, I was foreign policy advisor to President Calderon when uh, Barack Obama was elected uh, in, it was February, you know, November 4, 2008, November 5, 2008, President Calderon placed a call to Barack Obama, and Barack Obama told President Calderon, thank you for your call, and let me tell you that, I'm very, that, that very soon I'm coming to Mexico City to basically pay, pay tribute to Mexicans, because thanks to Mexican-Americans, I'm going to be President of the United States. He mean the Latino vote. And he came very early. <laughs> he came very early into, uh, into his administration, and he gave a beautiful speech at the Anthropology Museum with only Mexican students, about 1,000 of them. It was a beautiful day for U.S.-Mexican relations. Any single high-level Pentagon official will tell you the U.S. is blessed by having Canada and Mexico as neighbors. Take a look at Russia. Russia has 14 neighbors, and no one is as stable as Canada and Mexico. Mexico has been very stable since 1910, when we have the Mexican Revolution, and this is very telling. Every single intelligence high-level official in the US will tell you, yes, we're blessed by having Canada and Mexico. This is critical for the US geopolitical situation. I'm very happy that uh, President Biden, he really gets the importance of Mexico. He chaired the high-level economic dialogue between Mexico and the U.S. He asked President Obama to chair that. And he's, he's as vice, vice president, visiting Mexico in 2016. Uh, he's basically saying hello to the then presidential candidate, Andrés Manuel López Obrador. And, uh, and the first meeting in the White House for Biden was with the Canadians. This, with the second meeting in his White House was with President Lopez Obrador and his team. So this is very telling about the importance that he gave to both neighbors and to North America. Let me um, walk you a little bit through migration and border affairs and to trade and investment, just to try to make my case that Mexico is, a, an, a, as I call, the indispensable ally of the United States. Every single day during the last eight weeks, between 200 and 300 Ukrainians are landing in the Tijuana airport, less than 20 mi uh, miles from here. 
And basically, they stay in Mexico only for, let's say, 24 hours. They stay in this shelter. Uh, and what Mexico is helping is basically is preparing them to come orderly into the United States. And every day, there's about 200 and, and 300 Ukrainians coming through Tijuana into San Diego in a very orderly fashion. Actually, Beth, who is here, she asked me not long ago, do you think that uh, the consulate could help me with these Ukrainian friends that are coming uh, all the way from Ukraine? And I told her, I don't think it's necessary because this is fairly simple. There's a lot of Russians coming. Uh, uh, they got it, that there's something happening in the country. And last March, there's a record of people being arrested in the US-Mexico border, more than 220,000 people. So Mexico and the US, we must have to put our act together to make sure that we have an orderly migration into the US. This is, uh, remember, you might remember that in uh, October 2018, uh, we were, the US was having a midterm election, and there was an, an enormous Honduran caravan coming into Tijuana and San Diego. President Trump used to say they're invading us. This is a picture uh, of the Mexican southern border. Since 2018, no immigrant caravan has arrived into the US-Mexico border because Mexico is basically stopping them. This is a picture in the Mexican southern border. There were about 3,000 people from Honduras trying to come across Mexico, and they were stopped there. This has been very costly for President Andrés Manuel López Obrador. He's a leftist, let's face it, and he's a populist. And of course, a lot of people in his team, a lot of migration activists kept on telling him, why are you doing this? Well, I believe he's doing this because he understands that in the US, there's a bipartisan consensus that migration should be orderly legal and safe. So that's why we're basically stopping migrant caravans there. This is very telling. Uh, as you can tell, the number of asylum seekers in Mexico has grew exponentially. Last year, we have more than 131,000 asylum petitions in Mexico. Where are they coming? They coming from Honduras, from Haiti, Lots from Cuba. Just last month, we have 32,000 Cubans coming into the US-Mexico border. This year, there's going to be about 150,000 Cubans coming into the US-Mexico border. What I'm trying to tell you is that the US-Mexico border is, basic, is very sensitive to the well-being, not only of the hemisphere, but of, of the entire world. So that's why we must cooperate in the border. And uh, this year, there's going to be more than 150,000 asylum petitions in Mexico. So my message here is that Mexico has really become a buffer zone in terms of migration for the US. And we must continue to do this. This is, a, this is to, I mean, yes, there's a lot of Latinos here, Latinos and Latinas. They have, they have become the number one minority now. and. Uh, in the year 2060, close to 30% of the US population is going to be Latino, or Latinx. And uh, about 2 thirds of Latinos are from Mexican origin. And what I believe is that these Latinos and Latinas, they, they're going to play a natural role as bridges between Mexico and the United States, as bridges between the United States and Latin America. Nowadays. The US has as a Mexi a, a sent to Mexico an ambassador by the name Ken Salazar. Ken Salazar, this guy here, he's fifth generation Mexican American. He's from Colorado. He was US senator. As a US senator, he met President Biden, and they're very close. He was also Secretary of the Interior of President Barack Obama. So he gets a lot of things. He's, he has a lot of contacts in Washington that is very important for a US ambassador to Mexico. And guess what? Ken Salazar has become very close to Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador. And this is critical at this time, because now we're living times in Mexico that we have an imperial, imperial presidency. 
Yes, López Obrador is way too powerful. Uh, there's very little checks and balances. And it's very telling that this Mexican, American guy who gets Mexico, who gets Mexican culture, who is fluent in Spanish, he has been able to get very close to López Obrador. In this picture, this is southern Mexico. They're discussing. We're trying, he's trying to do uh, a sort of Cana, Panama Canal in the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. So see how close the ambassador is to him. So I, I believe that this is very telling about the future of Mexican Americans and Latinos reaching uh, with Mexico. Just imagine this uh, ever-growing population of Latinos. It would be great if they could retire in Mexico, if they could retire in Latin America. That would make a lot of sense. Let me go a little bit about trade and investment. This is our Secretary of the Economy, Tatiana Cloutier, and basically signaling early this year that Mexico nowadays is the number one trading partner of the United States. It's not China, it's not Canada, nowadays it's Mexico. And, uh, and I believe this is because of NAFTA, this is because of the new agreement, the USMCA, and uh, it's key for orderly trade between the two countries is key for increasing competitiveness in North America. These are the states, and as you can tell, all the border states, Mexico is their number one trading partner. And something that is not here, 33 US states, they have Mexico as the second most important trading partner. So for places like Texas, Mexico is way too important. This is very telling. Six million US jobs depend directly on US-Mexican US trade, almost 700,000 for California, half a million jobs in Texas, and uh, a quarter of a million jobs for Illinois. Yes, Mexico is important, and I believe that trade-wise, Mexico is, by all means, the single most important co country for the US. These are the top US cities exporting to Mexico, and uh, San Diego is number nine, and I'll bet you, in the next five years, we're going to be in the top five. But we're competing with very important cities like Los Angeles, the largest urban area in the US, or like Houston, which has become the, the fourth largest city in the US. Uh, but San Diego is advancing. This is very important, and this is very important for economists. What this is telling us is that when Mexico exports to the US, 40% of what Mexico is exporting to the US is American products. When Canada is exporting to the US, one quarter of that export is American. And when China is exporting to the US, it's only 4%. So this is easy. I mean, there's, it's easy to understand that Mexico should be the key ally to the United States. There's so much trade back and forth Mexico. There's so much intra-firm trade that this is what this explains. Uh, we already talked about that. That's a little bit of repetition. This is uh, the growth of US-Mexico trade uh, in the last 20 years. It has been increased 240%. It's huge now. And this is critical. We all know that there's a bipartisan consensus in Washington, one of the very, very few in which Republicans and Democrats, they believe that they must be tougher with China. Well, that they must reshore some of the economic activities from China to a closer region. This is Mexico. So I will say we should think about ally shoring. That's a new concept. And we should think about just near shoring. We know because of the pandemic, we know because of your geopolitical situation, because we know because the Russia invasion to Ukraine that these uh, supply chains should be closer to the US and no better place than Baja California, just 20 miles away from here. This is uh, Calibaja, what we call Calibaja. This is our region. And I can tell you that this is the best integrated region in the entire US-Mexico border. And uh, this is basically Baja California and San Diego, and larger San Diego. So we're 7 million people. And this is very telling. 
Every day, there's 150,000 people crossing from TJ to San Diego. And uh, there's businesses, for example, when you think Mexicans come in here, sometimes you think about nannies, about waiters, about uh, people coming to take care of the elderly here. But, for example, uh, uh, there's a lot of US-based businesses, uh, like Thermo Fisher, which its headquarters are in Carlsbad. They have a facility in Tijuana with more than 250 Mexican engineers there. Every year, there's 100,000 young Mexicans coming to engineering school in Mexico. Every year, about 30,000 Mexicans are graduating from engineering schools. So that's, that complements a lot the US, and that's why a lot of businesses could be able uh, to, to profit to have Tijuana and Baja California next door. This is the narrative that we're looking for. We gotta see Mexico as a reliable partner, uh, as a place where there's lots of innovation. Yes, there's music, there's joy. There's, of course, tacos. We all love tacos, why not? Uh, yesterday, we celebrated Cinco de Mayo, and uh, uh, I was tempted, uh, and I did have a little tequila when I came home <laughs> after being here, and uh, because that's part of the Mexican culture as well. So we got to... We gotta do this, we gotta have this narrative about Mexico, and I will say that key allies to that is the UC San Diego Blue Line and this park and market UCSD. We're closer to Tijuana, and I believe that we all will benefit if Mexico and the US become stronger, stronger partners, and if we could have a much better narrative about Mexico than the one we have now. Thank you very much. Thank you.